Welcome to the ADP Project. You're with your host, Stephen Jeff. Steve O. Yeah. Scary Dairy. I now, know. we I did know. this a long time ago, I Stephen. Know. Everybody knows of your fanciful conspiracy theories yep. around milk being bad for you. Oh, it's um, disgusting. But we want to broaden the topic because. We are. What has become since we last did Scary Dairy, which I can't remember which podcast oh, it is, Matt. Three we'll years look ago. at that one. Um, that was a great podcast. Lots of information in there, Steve, and it was really interesting to hear your backstory around ankylosing spondylitis. Yep. Uh, ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing, yeah. Um, yeah. As I said, man, if there's any particular scientific word, I'm going to trample all over it. Number. There we go. It was number one eight. One four, four, eight. four years ago. Wow, that seems like it's I, eight, ATP time, right? Every so, single paper here, oh, except for one, is, yeah. is 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 done more recent than that, and and so w- there's a whole heap of new information here. Yeah. Well, th- what's what's interesting is that we're going to re we're going to re go over that info to find, yep. as you say, the latest breakthroughs. But yeah. one of the things that's absolutely become a phenomenon mm. over the last several years, um, and and it's been been popular, mm. is the the rise. And rise of n- <coughs> um, non-dairy alternative milks. Yes, that's correct. And, and there's plenty of them now. Not too back, many. Back in, back when I was a boy, yeah. um, outside of of using milk, yeah. Um, and then there was skinny milk and low-fat milk. Yeah. Then we started to see soy milk. Soy milk. Now, yeah. do you, soy milk was everywhere, yeah. and bodybuilders had a particular aversion and people mm. who are interested in testosterone because of the whole soy testosterone mm. um, conundrum. Yes. I don't know. Can you have you got anything on that, Steve? I have. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yep. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll we'll come to that. We'll come yep. to that because I don't know what Steve's prepared. As per usual, we <laughs> just sort of have a conversation around what we're going to talk about, and then I start throwing questions at you. That's Most of the good. time, mate, like I've got to say, you don't drop too many when I'm oh, uh, it's, uh, you, know, you with them, right? There, there, there's so many milks that I had to sort of well, go, can I, wow, and I'm thinking. Every, almost everybody gets a coffee in the morning. I mean, yeah. everybody over the age of 18. Yeah. Um, if not uh, on their cereal, yeah. and, and I know you love your cereal, Steve. Love it. Um, <laughs> the, which is, for those that don't yeah. know who are listening to this for the first time, Steve hates cereal. Mm. Um, but uh, milks are really, really important. So people are using soy, and yeah. that's no longer the most popular. I'd imagine that almond, macadamia, mm. Oat, oat milk would probably be the major alternatives. Yeah. Now, there's also um, lactose-free milk in Australia. There's one called um, Zymilk? Zymilk or yeah. something like that as well too. Um, and, and look, depending on who you are, what you believe, how your health is situated, mm. all of those might be, you know, of interest. I used to love macadamia milk. Really? And I'd only use macadamia milk in my coffee because I like the creaminess of it. Right. I've since gone off that now. I don't yeah. know. It was really good. And then the place I was started using a different type of macadamia milk, mm, okay. and it tasted terrible. It's terrible. So what I want to go to today, Steve, is have a look at – let's revisit – Scary dairy. Sure. Let's look at the latest research, Steve. And again, your confirmation bias is going to be coming out here. And look, you've got fair reason to be biased against milk. A little bit. Um, But I want to break down. I just want the facts, man, as they say. I've got systemic analysis as far as the eye can see. But the other thing I want to have a look at, Steve, as well, too, is I want to look at the health benefits and appreciate there's probably some controversy around the environment, around certain non-dairy-based milks and what impact that they have. Have you got some info on that? Yeah, got some info on that. The other thing I want to have a look is at what is in these milks. Now, because people go, oh, almonds are good for you. Macadamia is good for you. Oats, well... The, I don't have oat milk yeah. and because I don't like, and I know you don't have a problem with this, Steve, I don't like the glutens because mm. oat milk has gluten. It does. So you've got the, the glutards out there mm. who won't take the oat milk, but typically it's considered to be, and I say that with all affection because yes. my son's a glutard. Yeah. Um, he's, compl- he's, he's borderline celiac, right? Yeah. So then, then you've got um, the creaminess of that milk, but then... What are these emulsifying agents, Steve? What are yeah. these additives that they put into it? And yep. surely, like anything, we've got the good, we've got the bad, yeah. and then we've got the ugly. Yeah. And it's this side of it because people go, oh, I'm having my latte with an almond milk. I'm being so healthy. And mm. actually, you're not because Terrible. of the, the crap that, that's in there. Yeah. So now, I don't know, Steve, are we going to mention companies or are we just going to mention ingredients? Just ingredients. Because, okay, good. Yeah. Because we don't want a lawsuit. And look, not mm. not that we would get into a lawsuit because we're literally 
analysing the information. Oh, I've got a label in front of me, and I've blocked out the Fair enough. And, and look, we don't want to bring any com- companies into, into disrepute, but I think when you're looking at labels, yeah. these are the sorts of things you can look sure. at. So, Steve. Yeah. Do you want to go way back to dairy? Do you want to start at dairy? We can start at dairy, yeah. Let's start at dairy. Okay. Summarising what we knew previously. Sure. Steve, you suffered from a debilitating disease. Yeah. One of the things that you wanted to do or that you learnt of was removing dairy out of your diet because yeah. of the inflammation aspects of it, correct? Absolutely. And okay. it's well known that dairy can cause inflammation via um, you know, zonulins. Does everyone know what a zonulin is? I it thought the zonulins were just from gluten. Zolulins are anything that can cause leaky gut syndrome. Okay. But I thought that that was the problem with gluten. Steve. It is. Yeah, yeah gluten, gluten causes, can be zolulins, depending on the individual. Okay. Um, and, of course, it also depends on the individual with regards to could be dairy or something else. Is it true that zonulins, and maybe you might want to break this down a little bit more, but zonulins effectively are like um, gluten is a zonulin. Yep. Right. Anything that causes leaky gut syndrome right? for that individual. Mm-hmm. For some people, gluten does nothing. Yes, I know. Uh, for some people, dairy does nothing. Yeah. But there's other sort of hidden... Th- the problem with dairy is that it has other hidden effects that we'll go into, but one of them is is it can cause leaky gut syndrome or exacerbate leaky gut syndrome. Well, And this is where you and I had the debate, I think, way back when, about mm. um, what they consider to be non-pasteurised, yep. non-homogenised milk, fresh out of the cow. Yeah, I've got some good news for you on that one. Because we, we discussed that, yeah. and I know that you hadn't done a lot of research at that yeah. time, right? But I always believe that, and they call it bath milk, but that's probably pigeon-holding it, and that's yep. controversial, because you cannot legally sell, in Australia, you cannot mm. legally sell um, non-pasteurised, non I think you can sell non-homogenised, but not non-pasteurised milk, because they talk about killing off the bugs. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously, I'm very, very keen, again, we'll just recap yeah. quickly, yeah. When you homogenise it, you change the size of the fat molecules and it completely turns milk into a franken food. Yeah. But if you go back to fresh is best, nature knows best, mm. ke- sucking out as, you know, cow, cow yep. milk, nice and warm, I still argue that it's not bad for you. Well, I've got some good news for you. Okay. Um, you ready for this? This is a review paper published... Yes. Um, He's going to beat me up, I bet. No, 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 oh, no, okay. no. Actually, yeah. you'd be happy with this one. Okay. This is published in Advanced Nutrition, so this yep. is a paper... That is all about sort of looking at the immuates of, of all sorts of things. It's a massive review paper. Yeah. And it talks about 2022, this study, and it talks about uh, dairy consumption and the risk of dying of cancer. Okay. Okay. He's so going to beat me up. Anyway, no, okay. no, no, no. Okay. I'm going to go right to the conclusion and then we'll work it back. Okay. Um, our results imply that high milk consumption, which was considered more than two or two cups or more a day, yeah. so that, that's what they considered high, especially high whole fat milk was associated with higher cancer mortality, in other words, higher cancer death, Yes. whereas fermented milk consumption was associated with lower cancer mortality, and this was particularly evident in females. So fermented, are you talking about things like um, kefir? Or kefir? Yeah, or... Sorry, the the milk that hasn't been it's still got the bugs in it. So the raw milk. Ah, it's fine. Right, and and this is what I say. Right, mm. like there is no way that 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 that. And, and look, yep. With cows now, they give them all sorts of hormones. Yep. which we've spoken about as well yep. too to increase milk production. Correct. We, we've 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 turned cows into battery cows. Yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. In terms of they line them up. They fill them full of drugs. They're giving them all sorts of hormones. Yeah. Um. They're, they're getting mastitis. They're, they're, they're full. I mean, like, they're, they're not even eating grass anymore. They're sure. eating grain. Like, their whole, their whole chemistry has changed. Mm-hmm. And so then for when we get the milk out, mm-hmm. then we take it, we homogenise it, yep. we pasteurise it, we kill it, we yep. turn it into franken food, and then we go, boom, here you go. I know, it's incredible. And it's particularly, like, it's bad for men and women. Men get more, I'm oh, sorry, men get more prostate, prostate cancer. Yep, they, You'll see that theme going through there. Yep. Women get more ovarian cancer. And this is based on IGF-1? Uh, that's one of the chemicals in it, but also estrogen. Yep. Does everyone know that cow's milk contains hormones? Do you think everyone knows that? Uh, maybe if they've listened to Scary Deer, we did touch on it, oh, I yeah. think. Um, but yes, no. I, I reckon the vast majority of people probably don't know. Right, okay, well, we can start there. Uh, and this is a paper titled, you're going to love this one, Exposure to Exogenous Estrogen Through the Intake of Commercial Milk Produced from Pregnant Cows. So How milk- much estrogen are we getting? Very good. Well, I'll, I'll go straight to the conclusion. Okay. 
which is the conclusion of this paper. And it says, uh, it's published in Pediatrics International, it says, the present data on men and children indicate that estrogens in milk were absorbed and gonadotrophin releasing hormone was suppressed, or in other words, reduces fertility, followed by a decrease in testosterone secretion. And it says, sexual maturation of prepubescent children could be affected by the ordinary intake of cow's milk. That's so, pretty bad. So, Steve, this is actually a second pod, a separate podcast that yeah. we've spoken about actually yeah. in our planning session yeah. that we're going to do. We're going to do one on fertility and men and female yeah. and the environmental factors that are actually suppressing fertility and mm. looking at things like estrogen and testosterone decline yeah. and what's going on. Or should I say not decline in estrogen actually, but it's um, – out of norm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's quite funny because they, they, they considered this, this is this is an interventional trial, so they gave this to children. And do you know how much milk that they drank? The average child? Yeah. No. Two cups is enough to cause all that. Right. 600 mils. Yeah. Now, you, you could summarise that children can easily have two cups of milk throughout their day. Mm-hmm. So... This yeah, I'd say that would be, most people would say that that's probably reasonable. Yeah, mm. exactly. So just a reasonable, normal amount of milk can cause that sort of damage in boys and, of course, in, in suppressing from releasing hormone. That's the, that's the chemical that tells everything else what to do. So why, why I mean, obviously, this is where we get the word gonads from, yeah. right? So this is affecting luteinizing hormone, is Luteinizing it? and follicle-stimulating hormone. Right. So, so why is the estrogen level so out of whack in these cows? Oh, because they're they're designed to lack. When a cow is lactating, yeah, um, they induce its lactation by mimic its pregnancy. So, so it's they're giving they're giving them hormones yeah. to effectively tell it it's pregnant. Yeah, so that it will produce significantly more milk than normal. Yeah, and estrogen. So a, does a, a cow normally produces milk though, doesn't it? It does, and also a cow normally has estrogen because it's a female cow. Right. So, but if you're out in the woods and you you find a cow and you yeah. milk that cow like yeah. the cow should milk right if, yeah. it's, a, if it's a dairy cow It'll, yeah absolutely but but that's not given hormones so what about natural organic milk well they still have the natural organic hormones in there because it's right. from a female cow uh, okay so it still has this estrogen in there okay so it doesn't really matter if it's a pregnant cow or not mm-hmm. and we'll get to that with more studies a bit later okay that's actually so he's still beating me up on the whole natural oh cow yeah but, but but still it's still you got to remember that, that, that the, the microbes in there do some benefit, yes. but it doesn't get rid of all the hormones because okay. the hormones are still... Because if you milk a cow, it stimulates more hormone and production in but the cow. But I will say, though, that I know that there are drugs that they give the cows to significantly increase the amount of milk that they produce. Yeah. So effectively, they like sit there, there's mm. the cow, wham, yeah. give it a whole heap of hormones so mm. the production of milk goes up by, I don't know what percent, I'd be making it up. Yeah. But let's say if it's 20% more milk, 30% mm. more milk, what have mm. you. I've heard that that causes problems, including mastitis, because, mm. again, you're messing with nature, yeah. and we're getting the whole blood past milk thing, which disgusts people, and yeah. we, a lot of people don't even want to hear about it, mm. but is true. Yeah. Then we've got the whole process of homogenization yep. and pasteurization as well, too, it, which kills off the beneficial bugs, yeah. so that all that you're left with, effectively, is changed fat structures within yep. the milk. Yep. Um, you've got... Um, Proteins within the milk that have been denatured, bastardized. bastardized. They're, they're, they're called messenger RNAs, by the way. Oh, <laughs> um, don't get me started. Yeah. So, so then we've got proteins that have been manipulated. Yeah. Then, then we've got huge amounts of hormones above what would be considered to be normal. Correct. So realistically, there is nothing good. No, but it gets worse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, there's more. All right, you, we talked about the meta-analysis showing cause of cancer, and we talked about the, the hormones, which of course are linked to those cancers. Because you've got IGF one, and you've got and you've got estrogen, right? So, exactly. So, so, so that's really bad. So the so IGF one. Now, is, people who are out there who are <coughs> trainers and all, oh, IGF one. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, I can get some more muscle tissue. Sounds right? great. Yeah, but in excess, it drives cancers. Yeah. It drives cancer. And Bobo Melnick is a, is a fantastic scientist that talks about this as, as elicited out all this biochemistry here, which we can put up on the screen. Um, it's quite techo. But he talks about uh, at the top there, you take in pasteurised milk and at the bottom you get cancer. So, and, and one of the mechanisms, well, yeah. Case closed. Yeah, one of the mechanisms. I mean, obviously it's not that simple, but. No, but one of the mechanisms is, is with IGF-1. Yeah. So IGF-1 goes in there, insulin-like growth factor one. When you yep. hear the word growth. Yeah. It grows all sorts of cells. Yeah. Now, 
don't for young guys out there listening to this going oh great I'm just going to suck down more milk because I'm going to grow it's 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 not the same no. because you're getting it through your gut through your entire system yep. and it's having a complete don't forget you're also getting the estrogen as well too so yes. so you know estrogen is prolific makes cells grow yep IGF-1 does as well too those are indiscriminately targeting tissue all over your body. And for the bodybuilders, this suppresses testosterone. So, so don't drink cow's milk if you want to build muscle. There you go. And there is one more chemical that gets even a little bit worse than that. Remember the mTOR that we talk about for building muscle? So, yeah, mTOR is mammalian, mammalian target of raptamycin complex yeah, okay. 1. Okay. Now, really awesome in things like yep. collagen. Yeah. Uh, again, we talk about this as yep. well too. Branched chain amino acids yep. stimulate mTOR. Yep. mTOR effectively helps to build more muscle fiber, correct? It does, right. yeah, and, and grows anything. Yep. But in milk, it's, it overstimulates it. And you get, uh, unfortunately, growth from that, which regard to cancer, they increase cancer growth. Because it's an, it's unadulterated. Right. It just drives it up ridiculously via the pathways, via the insulin-like growth factor and everything. Because mm-hmm. insulin-like growth factor drives up mTOR. And, and you've got to be careful because if you get too much of that, like you would if you had two glasses of milk a day, I'm not saying you do. If you have a bit in your coffee, um, less bad. But if you have two glasses of milk a day, 600 mils, then you're in big trouble. What about cream? Cream hat is, is fine. Yeah, funny, right? Yep. Butter is fine. Yep. Cheese is fine. Yep. Cow's milk bad. Why? Oh, because if you, if you take cream, is it's just a fat component. Yep. You take out all those hormones and everything, yep. Yep. and there's much less of it in it because it's more refined. A cow's milk, a full fat cow's milk is the worst thing you can drink. People who are on ketogenic based diets will use this. They can't yeah. use milk because obviously of the, the, the carbohydrates, mm. the, the lactose yeah. effectively, which is a carbohydrate. And that's the other um, bad cancer Sugar, thing. I should say. Yeah. Pardon? Is the high levels of sugar in there drives yeah. cancers as well. Yeah, right. So you got one, two, three, what, five different cancer causing chemicals in cow's milk. Okay, so I think, and look, this is a really quick rehash yeah. and update on what we yeah. did with Scary Dairy. If yeah. you want to know more about dairy and the reasons why not to use it, maybe go back and listen to that episode. But I think that's enough, Steve. We've probably scared people enough about Scary Dairy. All right. um, and what we mean by that is specifically pasteurised, homogenised yeah. uh, farm factory milk. Correct. So go for your butter. Yep. Go for your creams. If you can eat fresh, local farms, if you can eat organic, yep. where they actually have a different processing, churn the buttermilk, all that sort of stuff, yep. maybe, but um, and that's a better option. Yep. But uh, now let's get into then all the people who go, yeah, we knew that dairy was bad, or yeah. we knew that milk was no good for us. Yeah. We didn't want it for various reasons, mm. and probably we've given them more than maybe what they already knew. Yeah. See, though, uh, yes. so we've got a, a, a little... A little paid ad here. Mm. Um, well, this is interesting. So we've recently conducted quite a lot of study around the microbiome and around gut health. Mm. And it's something obviously that we're quite well known for. But we've launched a practitioner-only product called Gut Right Clinical. Amazing. Now, if you're a practitioner, um, you are able to um, sell this product. The information is only available to qualified um uh, practitioners. So if you're a naturopath, if you're a clinical nutritionist, integrated doctor, pharmacist, um, chiro, osteopath, and other people of that ilk who are typically have points. Now, what points are they, Steve, that these people have to get every Oh, CPE points? That's it. Yep. Um, and Steve and Eliz Mariah are going to be doing some seminars, particularly, specifically for practitioners. Um, so if you'd like to learn more, please send us um, send us in an email at info at ATP Science and put um, a clinical uh, gut right. We can send you out the information. We can send you out the studies. It's fantastic. Again, please, it is only for practitioners. Um, so if you'd like to learn more about that, which, Steve, is pretty breathtaking. I know, it's so amazing. And we can't talk about it no. here, but some really amazing information around mm. gut health, around uh, antioxidants, around um, lipopolysaccharides, yep. lipopolysaccharides, around um, Klebsia, I mean, some incredible stuff. Yep. Um, please, you know, send us in some, um, send us in an info, we'll send you out an info pack, mm. and we can talk to you about the study and just how incredible this new product is. It's exciting. Great. What are you worried about? All right, so let's then leave dairy to the side now. Sure. So can we go back to the granddaddy of the first milk alternative, which is soy? Soy. Because there is still some controversy around soy. I'd never drink soy. And I don't know if if, if it's un... If it's if it's unreasonable bias, Steve, because yeah. again, I heard that soy effectively reduces testosterone production in men. Fine for some women, mm. but 
I've got to be saying my, my knowledge really and the last time I really delved into soy was probably 20 odd years ago and yeah. I just completely said no, no thank you. Well soy does have problems with allergies because soy allergies are common so, so putting that aside it can reduce testosterone in men slightly nowhere near as much as cow's milk though. That is hilarious. Yeah, because well, again, cow's milk has literal estrogen in it. So growing up, right, yeah. like, and, and when I was young and all the rest of it, I was having down my, my Masashi Shiho. Yep, my, yep. <laughs> for old guys, they'd probably remember this, right? I remember. Um, you know, bad tasting shakes mm. that weren't particularly well made. Was like cutting edge at the time, but compared yeah. to what we've got today. Sucking it down with my milk. Yeah. Having my 10 wheat bix a day. Yep, I'm not kidding, that. right? Right. And, um, mate, but I would have a, a protein shake with milk. But oh lord, don't you put soy in there because I'll turn into a girl by the by, by night time, right? But little did I know that the milk was actually worse. Way worse. By how much worse? Because there is there's no estrogen in soy. Right. Okay, there's no estrogen whatsoever. There's there's phytoestrogens, so they have very weak effects, about one one thousandth the receptor. In cow's milk, there is literal estradiol, like actual estrogen. Wow. Like and it does suppress your testosterone level. We've seen that in that study we said earlier. So on a scale of one to ten, yeah, for drinking cow's milk, we're up there, right? We're sort of it's above a, seven, eight. We're, it's we're a ten. For, oh, right. It, cause, 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 well, I haven't got to the the granddaddy of them all that I found out. Another study that came out very recently on, on cow's milk. On cow's milk, well, yeah. we, we're still talking about cow's milk. Then, so right. let's talk you about it. Yeah, let's go for the granddaddy. This will scare you. Then. Okay. This is the intake of dairy products and associated with major atherosclerotic cardiovascular diseases. It's a systemic review and meta analysis of cohort study. So. Massive study, 2021. I'll skip to the chase. Wow. Who, who, who conducted the study? Who was it done by? It wasn't a Lancet, was it? No, it was published in Nature. Oh, okay. Which is quite a big paper. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so it was a, it was a, it was a. What, what sort of study was it again, Steve? Oh, it's 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 a meta analysis. Meta analysis. So that, this is lots number. and lots of studies yep. that have effectively been peer reviewed and yep. accepted. Yep. And then this is the analysis of. All, all of those. Of it's the most powerful form of evidence. Yeah, I get. know that you love these. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, yeah, all nerds like us do. In conclusion, this systemic review indicates a positive association with high milk um, consumption um, with regards to heart disease and an inverse association with cheese. Now, does everyone know what that means? No. The more cows we can drink, the more heart attacks you get. Yep. The more cheese you eat, the less heart attacks you get. Why? Ah, I'm glad you asked. Ha uh-huh. ha. It has to do with... Um, because growing atherosclerotic plaques in your body, if yeah. you disrupt your hormones and disrupt mTOR and disrupt all those IGF-1s, you will grow fatty deposits inside your arteries, they found, and it causes heart attacks. So don't drink milk for your heart health. But then, and again, cheese, I've got this kind of love-hate relationship coming with cheese now. We know that it can cause migraines. Yeah. We know that it can cause kidney stones. Yep. We know that it's, it's, it's high in sil- is it sil- oxalates or salicylates? Oxalates. O- oxalates. Yep. So we know that it's got you know some, some of those issues, mm. but yet it seems to have some benefit as well too. It does so. have some benefit because it's very high in saturated fats. Right. Short-chain saturated fats. Okay. And you might go, oh, that's bad for your heart. No. Good. I said short-chain saturated short chain. fats. So, so which, which ones in particular? Um, um, butyric acid. Oh right, okay. Yeah, uh, is is the main one, and so if you a lot like butter is named after butyric acid. I didn't know that. Oh okay, so so I that, did not know. Did you know that? I yeah. did not know that. So there you go. So it's high in butyric so, acid. So and, and again, this is the whole thing. We always say nature knows best. Yeah. Butter over margarine. Oh, right? by but mile. butyric acid butyrate. Yeah. So yeah. in terms of what helps to produce butyrate, is it that does. Correct? But right. also the short chain fatty acids increase HDL cholesterol, which is the good cholesterol. Wow. You see what, see what we're getting to? And yet they used to say that butter will, will harden your arteries. Because it increases cholesterol. Oh, now my Now they gosh. know there's two different types. One's good, one's Whoa. bad. It's just, man, it's enough. What a, what a bait and switch. What a what great amazing. marketing. You know, next thing so, you know. So, I mean, oh this is... Oh, my gosh. So, you, you do it's not It's evil, to, man. I mean, like, seriously, it is evil. I mean, whether it's through ignorance or actual planned. Yeah. But this is the same thing with smoking, right? They knew years and years before yep. it came out that it caused cancer yep. but yet lord knows they covered that up they, know. we know that they covered it up yeah how much longer must me go on with this rubbish you can see the power of marketing yeah. you can see the power of 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 advertising mm. and positioning and you know i i say i absolutely believe that that what is good is called evil and what is evil is called good yeah but but a lot of people say like i've just showed you it causes heart disease cancer and all oh, stuff well, there's hormones countless of millions doing. of people that have died from but this. It, but cow's milk does have calcium in it you see what i'm saying it's got one good feature how how what's the absorption of that calcium like steve uh it, it did varies 
because it, it, it does stuff. Are you your better garden. off eating spinach or, or leafy oh, greens? Oh, way better. Oh, okay. Because you got vitamin I rest K. My case, you're yeah, right. yeah. But but this is what people will point to. They'll go, aha. But, you know, cow's milk, it's full of calcium. And this is what this one good thing is. I would much rather people eat um, spinach or, mm. or, or, or leafy greens, you know, um, e- even bloody sardines. Yeah. Um, you know, nobody eats sardines anymore. Uh, what, what we know is that, that drinking cow's milk doesn't reduce fractures. Mm. So it's – and that, that's the bottom line. Mm. You're strong – the thing is – and so we know that from the data and they've, they've got right. a paper now, here on that's it. disgusting. But you're waffling on about normal milk too much, Steve. Yeah, you're showing your bias. Yep. You're let's showing go, your hate. Let's go to soy. Soy. So, okay, picking back up on the conversation. Yep. <laughs> so I'm sitting there when I'm younger freaking out yep. about – Oh, can I even eat tofu? Now, I know that's fermented and it has yeah. nothing to do with nothing, right? Um, I got confounded one day because I had a woman come in who was using a soy protein isolate and she said it significantly improved her estrogen condition. Now, I can't remember if she was having hot flushes, if mm. she was postmenopausal, yeah. or if she was um, perimenopausal and all the rest of it. And I'm like, I, I just, I had such a bias against soy mm. that I couldn't actually see any benefits. Yeah. I believe that she believed that she was telling the truth. It's, it's, it's well known to treat um, any sort of condition like, like menopause and estrogen because it contains phytoestrogens, genistin, diastin, the, these sort of things which bind to the estrogen receptors and have a weak effect. So if you've got high estrogen, it will bind to the receptors and, and lower the effect. Yep. So, so and that's effectively what she was saying. Yeah. And I was so stupid back then, Steve. Yeah. I was just like, no, no, it's, it's still bad for you. <laughs> well, pe- people sell um, you know, isoflavone powder sure. to, to treat all sorts of diseases, including cancer. Yeah. So uh, it, it does have some positive effects in that area. Mm-hmm. Now, soy protein is not great. It upsets people's guts, blah, 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 blah. And so you go for the, the, the better, like the collagen ones that don't upset your gut and absorb way better. Sure. But, but there is some evidence to show there is some benefit in having this if you've got those conditions. And for young guys that are listening to this, you're better off going and drinking your soy milk as opposed to cow's milk oh, and absolutely. putting that in with your shake because you're actually going to get a better overall testosterone output. Cow's milk suppresses testosterone. We know that. That's okay. in the literature. It suppresses gonadotrophin releasing hormone, wow. which can impact your fertility. Okay. And that's for two and glasses. That, and, that, and, that's, and that's at the bottom end of the – and that's at the, the, the very mildest bad negative effects. I mean, as oh, you yeah. said, cancers, uh, yeah. prostate cancers. And, and, just, uh, and, and you've got to remember, most people who drink milk, like let, let's say you know, my age or younger, or in, people in their 20s, they will go to the shop and get a flavoured 600 ml milk. Um, you know what I mean? Like one of those, I won't, I won't mention the brand name, and different in Melbourne. And they drink that. No problem at all. It'll be flavoured and it's full of cow's milk and all the sugar and all the artificial flavours and preservatives. And that is considered you got, by some... Given the last few podcasts that we've done on artificial colours, yeah. um, Lord forbid there's artificial sweeteners in there as well too. But then you've got your sugars. I mean, typically you wouldn't, would you? Anyway, you've got your sugars, you've, you've, got, you've got all these hormones running around. Yeah. Literally, it is probably one of the worst things that you could put in your mouth or your children's mouth. Absolutely, and if it didn't get refrigerated, you'd get sick from it too from from because it's milk, it goes off. So, I mean, you've got, okay. you've got, you've got problems. <laughs> you've, you've, got, got, you've got problems. I've got yeah. problems. Got, but you know what, Steve? I understand your, your hatred yes. for this product. Um, but anyway, all right. right, now, soy milk. So, soy besides milk. that then, yeah. um, where do you rank it and, and what's in it? And, okay. and is the is the other compounds in soy and soy milk found in almond milk and macadamia milk and that, that they, they commonly use? Yeah, and, and there's problems with those. Okay. So okay. so notwithstanding soy not as bad as I thought, yeah. on a scale of one to ten, if you're just looking at soy milk as mm. an alternative to milk, mm. uh, and let's put milk at a one out of ten, like yeah. being very, very, very bad. bad ten, yeah. And let's say 10 is a really good thing. Mm. Where would you put soy milk? I'd put it about five. Okay. Because it has some benefits. Some benefits. But it has some negatives too. Okay. And what are the negatives? The negatives are like, forget the soy, but, but the other things that are in soy milk. And I've got a label here that's representative of all, I'll call them vegan milks. Now, are we talking, are we going to talk about, are we going to mention that soy is one of the most genetically modified crops in the world oh, as well yeah, too. Is that too? We have. I don't even yeah. think we're going to go there, Steve. No. Are we? So again, we podcast. always say nature knows best. Yeah. Organic is best. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not fans of GMO at all, at all, at all. Mm. Um, so we're going to leave that to the side yeah, as well too. But, it's but, but, be but done soy, so. soy and canola, I think, are probably the the most heavily modified crops in the world, and, and, and corn, it, corn as well too. Yeah, and it's funny because they put sunflower and canola oil in most of these milks. I have seen them put canola oil yeah 
Is that, the the label ma- is that for mouthfeel? Is that to improve the yeah, yeah. creaminess? Creaminess. Yeah. Because cow's milk has fat. Yep. Um, but they usually put as number one oil in there is sunflower oil. Okay. And then I don't mind sunflower. Sunflower oil sounds great. Sounds great. It's got sun in the title. Well, sunflowers are good for you. Sunflower yeah. seeds. Yeah, they're good for you. So is it sunflower seed oil? Yeah. And but the that fat's got to be good for you, Steve. Except when you then ultra heat treat it, oh and it releases a chemical called aldehydes. So if you if you cook with vegetable oils, it increases yeah. aldehyde levels and, and it, it hydrogenates it, right? Yep, and and it, it releases these aldehyde, uh, which are chemical. So additives. aldehyde to me sounds like formaldehyde. So what? Yeah, formaldehyde is a simple aldehyde. Okay, so what? Uh, what? And and that you use that to preserve stuff. I mean, dead bodies and stuff, right? Yeah. You don't want to be drinking formaldehyde. No. So what are aldehydes? Aldehydes are, are like a, formaldehyde is an example of a, of an aldehyde. And what is an aldehyde? Is it an acid? Is it an no, alcohol? It's, is it's, it a? It's like a CH. O group that you add onto a chemical that causes major DNA disruption in the body. So it is endocrine disrupting. Yep. And my understanding is that it's one of the most, wow. So it actually hits on the DNA. The, yeah. So um, unfortunately, um, and is, is this, is this, would this be considered to be in relation to trans fats? Would it be like in that sort of ilk of, of evil? It's probably more evil. Wow. Because this attacks your DNA. So, um, <clears throat> oh dear. It's quite bad. Now, the, the, only, the only good thing about it is that you have to heat it to, to release the aldehydes. Oh, well, the, I have it in my coffee every morning. Okay, so... So, the, so I'm the, screwed. The, so the, the, you're screwed already because out of the packet, the, these are called UHT milks, aren't they? Ultra heat treated. Oh, what did you say? What does the heat stand for? Heat treated. Ultra mm, heat Ultra. Treated. Not just normal, just not low heat. So, so what heat. it does is it kills all, oh, because ultra heating it about 78 kills degrees, off the kills the bugs, yep. and then it's sealed. So yep. it lives forever on the shelf. So that's a good way to preserve things, but the aldehydes are released. Oh, shizen. And the aldehydes release, Okay, uh, and I'll read this here, when heated, corn, sunflower, palm, soya bean oils release chemicals known as aldehydes, which have been linked to various cancers. Some studies suggest that toxic compounds may promote the oxidisation of reatinylhyde, forming retinoic acid in the body too. We know that it destroys your vitamin A. Mm. So it destroys your vitamins. Wow. Um, so, so these aldehydes effectively yeah. target your genes. Yeah. So, so we know that we're in a constant state of DNA repair. So Always. And, and, and these things are, are, are constantly going. Agent Orange, I have a feeling, was a gene disrupting yeah, it does. chemical yeah. because it stops the repair, right? Yeah. Which then means that your 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 genes like look, they photocopy, right? And they yeah. photo, photocopy exactly. all the time. If you've got good nutrients and all the rest of it, you're getting plenty of toner mm. and quality paper. Yep. So the photocopy is, is working better for yeah. longer until you, we get to about 120, and then you drop dead yeah. um, because of cell death, right? But 122, some lady lived to just recently, a French lady. Yeah, sure. I believe that. Yeah. So, yeah. Go just after 100 and she died. Yeah. But um, here's the interesting one. But but if you're putting this chemical, yeah, it's like putting not putting in the toner properly, yeah. having really crappy paper, yep. not and so all on. of a sudden things start to break down quickly. Yeah. And then for disease start, steps in, correct? Yeah. Because then you're not getting things properly formed. Yeah. Exactly. Holy macaroni, eh? And then you've got canola oil as well. Rapeseed oil, they call Rape it. Rapeseed oil. So that's, if you're looking on your labels, yeah. you'll see canola oil if you don't see canola because that did yep. get a bad rep a while ago, though. They've kind of unwound that position, which is pretty smart of them, right? Yeah, yeah. But rapeseed is the other thing that it's called as well, too. So, so same, same? Yeah, but it gets... Endocrine disrupting as well? And not as bad. Okay. Oh, that's but, good. But, but it's still, still not healthy for you. Okay. Um, it's a bad type of monounsaturated fat. Right. It's a good type is the olive oil, oleic acid. Yeah. So this can displace that and just it, it just, just disrupt that. So wow. it disrupts you, you sat, desaturizes in the body. It's funny. Why do they choose to make food out of this stuff? It's cheap. Speaking of cheap, this not get in the way of profit. And you, you know these things have calcium in it, don't you? No. These milks, yeah, they add calcium in it. Do they? Why? So they can call it milk. Exactly. Yeah. But guess, guess. No, it makes sense, right? Yeah. I'm just trying to think. Yep. I'm trying to put on my stupid hat and go right. So, so. Milk is defined because it has calcium. That's what makes milk calcium. So therefore, advertising, you put calcium and you can call it an almond milk or you yeah. can call it whatever because milk, milk, milk is defined by calcium. It's defined by something. Yep. That's this the, is and that's a stupid marketing person that's obviously done that. that then the government's gone, oh, well, let's legislate on that. Yep. And you, you, you know what type of calcium they put in there? Uh, 
Tucker Ferrell? No, no. No, don't think of a good form. Calcium phosphate, real cheap, nasty oh. form. <laughs> I said, I, I'm going through, I'm thinking, hang on, it could be. Yeah. No, yeah. what? What, they what put, was it? They put calcium phosphate in there, which is a terrible, inorganic, cheap form of calcium that's barely absorbed. It doesn't matter, it's got calcium on the label. It's exactly. People are like, oh, calcium's got to be good And one, one other ingredient there, remember, this is a high-quality milk. It's nearly as good as milk. Yeah. The only other ingredient they add is salt. Oh, well, I'd, 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 least sodium you worry. chloride? Yeah. Yeah, Le- at least it? your worries. In this in this high brand, they had um, they use sea salt, but it's pretty much similar. Sea salt, it's got to be good for you. Wow! I think if your thyroid's going to be getting yeah. all that iodine from sea salt. Yeah, so so quite interesting, isn't it? The old uh, nut milk and the it is. So and soy, this is a high quality one. Okay, so soy, almond, yep, um, oat, yep. Is there any real difference in terms of the actual? major ingredient or are not, they all not really so just, just obviously one's got soy one's got almond so so if you macadamia gonna, and, yeah. and then the oats got gluten but gluten. as far as it's all those other things that you need to watch out were there are there any out there Steve that you know of now surely yeah surely there's got to be some people who are drinking who know about cow's this milk stuff yeah who then go I'm going to create this who must be put making some good products out there did you in your research this is the most s- expensive one I found this how, many, the, how many? How many did you look type. at? Right, oh. the barista type. Right, so oh. they, they would create creaming agents as well too. Oh, there was no creaming agents in there. Really? Yeah, because you have got to remember that the, no the, guar gum or anything like no, that. No, no gums in okay. this. Yeah, so okay. you can add gums to them, and, and usually the gums aren't too bad, like xanthan gum yeah. and that sort of stuff. No. So here's a very. I mean, this one's called organic, oh, right? God, organic, it gets, organic, it gets, orga- gets worse. organic oat milk. Yeah. So what's this one got on it, Steve? Well, this one has... Uh, this Filtered water. That's got to be there, good for you. There you go. That's the thing. And it's but if it's filtered from your toilet, <laughs> um, I mean, you can make anything sound good, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, well, okay. Well, well, this one's got filtered water. It's got the oats, of course. Organic, Steve. Steve. Organic oats. Now, that is marketing 101, right? Yeah, it there. is. It is. You know what magicians do, Steve? What? They're like, hey, I look over yeah. here, and they're doing things with their hand while this hand's doing something else. Yeah. Marketing 101 is putting really nice packaging mm. with organic. Yep. Oh, that's great. Yep. And here's radium, you know, 251 over here. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, you know, it's what they don't highlight or what they hide in the, what I like to call the ingredient word panel. Yeah, exactly. Um, so um, word, it's a word salad. It's more, terrible, more anything, isn't it? You know? this, this one's got more problems. Yeah, what's this one got? It's got more oats, which is not good for you. Yeah, and yeah. I know that you don't like the oats. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, okay. uh, it's got but let's say people like oats. All right, let's All say right. I like oats and they're not worried about gluten. That's fine. Um, but the mineral salt in this one is calcium carbonate. Yeah. The what's wrong with cal- that? It's an antacid. Oh, dear. Uh, so you're going to destroy your stomach acid by drinking this. So if you have this with food, then you're going to not be able to digest whatever the hell you're eating with it. Yeah. Is there any way to tell how much is actually in here? Yep, uh, 300 milligrams elemental. So there'd be about oh, you've got um, about a gram of um, of calcium carbonate, which is about an antacid tablet. Holy snap. Yep. So if you're drinking this, you're getting an antacid, you're which is antacid. one of the things that we talk about all the yep. time, one of the worst things that you can do yep. long term. Yep. Short term, sure. If you have a yep. bit of antacid and all the rest of it, no, I just I don't I wouldn't use it at all anyway, Steve. Yeah. But let's say you've got a problem. Mm. Okay, that's acute. But it's the chronic use of these sorts of things that are gonna cause massive problems. And a lot of people would drink this every morning when they first wake up for breakfast. This product they? is not suitable as a complete milk replacement for children under the age of five yeah. years. That's because it doesn't have any taurine in it. Yeah. Um, taurine is needed for kids. Yeah. Um, so, so you wouldn't give this as a sole source of nutrition for anybody, but particularly for children, because after about five, you can make taurine. Because there's no, there's no. This is a incomplete protein because it's a, a a vegan source. Wow. And you know what vegans are like. Yeah, they're wonderful. Um, but but also, if you happen to have, aren't you, Matt? I, I think You're if a you have. The other bad thing here is it's got ten grams of sugar in it. This one. Um, per surf, per normal surf. So that would just be cup. coming from the, the organic oat, right? Yeah, probably. Sure. So they don't add sugar to it. So, um, yeah, it's about the same as milk, I think. Yeah, it's got zero it. fibre, low salt, low fat. Yeah. Um, so there you go. It's got no trans fat. See, has a positive. Yeah, that's Look good. at that. Yeah. There you go. It's not all bad. Mm, but, but, yeah, the big one there, the calcium carbonate, calcium Steve. Calcium carbonate. Is, how significant would you say that is that's as a problem? That's it. If, you, if you're, if you're going to drink this with like a cereal or something, a lot of people do, yep. then you're going to poorly digest. That's going to cause, you're going to get the carbohydrates through your stomach and into your small intestine called SIBO. So you're saying to a leaky gut. 
Yeah, leaky gut and um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So effectively, same thing again. Maldigestion. Your, your stomach is a pit of hydrochloric acid. This yep. is like putting putting um, neutralizing dousing, it, dousing it with 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 chemicals. And in. you may also get gas reflux, whose carbonates when they hit the stomach form carb, um, carboxylic acid and carbon dioxide. So you get oh. you know gaseous. Okay, so, so this could cause. So far now, I'm hearing that I'm going to long blacks. Yeah. Well, black coffee is very good for you. <laughs> but here's... Uh, that, that, but this is this is bad, Steve. This is this bad. Is bad. Can, I, can I tell you something else about my, my, my routine? Now, mm. when typically I'll go to said coffee company, mm. and I noticed this the other day, and it actually really bugged me. And I'm, 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 I'm so scatterbrained at the moment, sometimes I think of something and then I push it to the side. And I, mm. I don't. So you're going to go and get your coffee. Mm. It's hot. Mm. Like I burnt my tongue this morning. Um, yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, <laughs> but it's in a it's it's in a wax cardboard cup. Yeah. But worse than that. Yeah. And it's funny because one company I go to has a black lid. One company I go to has a white lid. It's oh. plastic, right? Yeah. I'm sucking that down. One of them, I'm sure I can taste a plastic taste to it. Probably. Well, wax will melt. Well, this is what I'm thinking. You've got this very thin plastic lid. Mm. Now, and I, and people, are, people are probably way ahead of me going, Jeff, you, you numb yeah. that. Just get your own you know, thing and pour it into there or what yeah. have you. But what are, the, what are the cups treated with? And I don't know the answer to this. Well, I don't know what, either. What, what, are the, what are the wax? What are the, what are the coffee cups? It wouldn't be natural wax. No. So and, and, then, and then, the, and then the, the, the phytoestrogen is on top. Yeah. Or the do, you know, do you know one of the coffees I love the most? And I, and, I, and I stopped doing it because I'm so freaking busy all the time, right? Yeah. But I love percolated coffee yeah. with a dash of cream. Yeah, that's that's now, now you're talking about the alternative to having milk in there, have cream in there. Um, can you do that? Is that like yeah, because I don't coffee. like long black, I've got to say, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate, I'm a bit of a bit of a wolf where it comes to that. Shut up, Matt. I'll punch you straight in the gerbils. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, I am a bit of a, bit of a, yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah. So, is there any good news then? Look, if you can find no, it doesn't one, sounds, it doesn't I, sound like I there is. I just went to the Look, Coles and Molly's website. What I would website. like to hear, and actually, guys, if you're listening to this, yeah. and again, Steve, I, I have not looked, and I appreciate you do your research. Mm-hmm. If you can find alternative to um, cow's milk, almond milk, mm-hmm. oat milk, soy milk, macadamia milk, mm-hmm. I think that's all of them. There might be some others. Yeah. Um, that are good for you, that have got good additives, or if you'd like us to have a look at them mm. to break them down, please send them through. Yeah, I mean... Um, because could, at the mm-hmm. moment, Steve, I mean, based on what you've said, and I know um, Matt, who's our, our, our sound engineer, and Lauren, um, guys, you went through and you had a look, and, and you were saying, and, and Lauren's as smart as a whip. Yeah. You, you, you're a bit... Matt, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> but, but Lauren's as smart as a whip, right? Yeah. So, so and, and she's a qualified nutritionist yep. as well too, right? Yes. So she couldn't find anything? She found one. So we just had a brief interlude in yes. Magic and Television and Radio. You would not know that. Nah. But Matt ran downstairs to have a chat with Lauren yep. to go through the ones that she had recommended. Now, what's really funny is that at home, we have – I've used both of these at yes. home. And this is – Tony's up on it, right? She's mm. really good. So the first one is Nutty Bruce, which is actually um, – Who's it made by? I don't even know. It's good. The, the funny thing is, I reckon they must be fans of ours because they use the same kind of quirky marketing that we do as well too, oh. about not farting and all the rest of it. Um, right. And we are not, by the way, I'm just going to disclose, we are not paid by this company. No. They have not asked us to say this. This is an absolute honest review. Yep. Um, and we're going to, and Steve-O, you know, just very quickly, we've pulled up the ingredients here, which is filtered water. mm mm-hmm. Uh, activated organic almonds, which yep. I always find a bit funny, yeah. um, to be honest, but it will come back to that. Yeah. Um, so, and it's almonds water, organic brown rice, and sea salt. Now, I don't know why they put the organic brown rice in there, Steve. Would that be for colour? Would that uh, be, be for f- filling and texture? It okay. Really too watery, otherwise. Um, and a bit of flavour. Now, I use this one at home. Yeah. So, Steve, what would you give this one out of ten? Oh, I'd give it an eight. Wow. I mean, okay. it's you know the brown rice is probably the only 
mild issue I have, but the, but the amount of carbohydrates. Why do you not like brown rice? I mean, I use basmati rice. Or really yeah, it's just a little bit refined and you have to cook it a lot to get the nutrients out of it. But sure. as I said, there's bugger all carbohydrates in there. So, yeah. you know, 3.2%. Yep. Um, so, yeah, we, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Yeah, seven or eight. I mean, it's, sure. pretty, it's pretty pretty open, pretty plain. Yeah, label. yeah, I'd, I'd drink that. No so who, who makes, who is Nutty Bruce? Is Nutty Bruce its own brand or? or so this is in Australia, right? So that that's pretty cool. So... So Nutty Bruce, drink Bruce. And you can get it from supermarkets. You can in Australia. Now, yeah. for our American friends, you guys just go and have a look as well too. Drink so it's Bruce. Just, it's just called Bruce, is it? Drink Bruce. Drink Bruce Australia. So maybe they are global. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's go. called Nutty Bruce. Anyway, so, and there's the, they've got oat milk. Oh. Uh, now, we didn't look at that one. No. Um, but guys, go and have a look. So, yeah, it's, it's got no nasties there, right? Yeah. We'll so anyway, guys, so I think, uh, and, and we just had another look at another one, and I'm not going to mention it because we don't want to call any of these people mm. out, right? But but, but that Nutty Bruce looks pretty good. It that's does, the it does. That looks, that's the best by and, far. And you'd give that one an 8 out of 10, Steve. Absolutely, so I wouldn't have a problem. Could, could even be higher. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what, if you have it with fruit and vegetables or whatever you're Look, you're I like it because I give it to my to my boys. They yeah. use it. They have, they have rice bubbles, Steve, you know, yeah, that's or, right. the organic ones, yeah. um, you know, from whatever, whoever it is. Don't shoot them. No. Um, actually, to, to they're, my, they're growing all right, so. Yeah. How tall is um, he now? Yeah, he's, he's, he's uh, I, I, I've been measuring him every month. I haven't actually measured him this month, but I, I actually think he's grown again. So Jeez. wouldn't be surprised if he hasn't grown another centimetre. Oh, but, um, God. Uh, what was I going to say? So Nutty Bruce here in Australia, have a look, guys. Try and get rid of anything. Mm. Um, what are the things to watch out for, Steve, if you want to go calcium, to your- Calcium carbonate? Because that dampens yep. stomach acid yep. and this significant amount based on a couple that we looked at. Also so, can stop the absorption of the minerals because it's an inorganic form. So it could create leaky gut. What else, Steve, should we um, be looking out for? Don't have any dairy, whenever, you know, milk at all. No. But, but with nut milk, um, yeah, look, nut look milk, out yeah. for uh, sunflower oil. So, so not safflower, not sunflower, sunflower oil. oil, right? Yeah. And what was the other one that you uh, said? Is canola, canola oil. oil. Yeah, yep. They are added in a lot of them. Yeah, um, and also added sugars. And the main problem is because. Oh, because when you heat them, like yep. ultra heat treated milk, yep. it causes aldehydes, which increases cancer. So yep. you don't want to get cancer. <laughs> really, it's a best it's a advice bit of a bummer. Put a bit of a crimp in your day. It does. It's okay. not, not, not recommended. So overall, of yeah. all the ones that we looked at, and I reckon we must have looked at probably maybe eight or eight or ten yeah. by the time we had a look awesome. at all. There's only one that we found. So there one. are out there if yeah. you're looking for alternatives. Costs a bit uh, more. But mind you, um, Steve, I just said to you, oh, you know, just before – I think I'm going to go back to percolated coffee with some organic cream in there um, <laughs> yeah. and, and do it myself. Why I not? love the smell. And this is the thing Americans do that we don't do a lot here. They, they do percolated coffee. We don't do much here. Like no. you can go anywhere and you can get percolated coffee with a shot of cream. Yeah. That's better mm. than having, definitely than having a flat white or a, or a latte or a skinny latte or any mm. of those sorts of things. If you are going to go down the, um, the, the, the nut milks, and you're at a shop, they, yeah. they're not going to turn around. I mean, maybe some people would, what's in there, but you're probably going to have to do it at home or insist on using Nutty Bruce. If you've got a relationship with your lo local, um, you know, barista, barista yeah. or what have you, yeah. you, in Australia, you could ask for that. If mm. overseas, find one that doesn't and just say, look, could you please, they might consider it. Sure. D especially if they're, if they're, if they're sort of health minded and health conscious. Yeah, absolutely. Get them to listen to this podcast. Absolutely. Um, Steve. I think we've covered it all. I think we have. It's Again, like I think huge. we've put the exclamation mark behind milk. Do not use milk. Well, it's dangerous for you. Yeah. It's a health Unless issue. you've got a cow out the back <laughs> and you're drinking straight out of the udder. Yeah, that, that would be all right. That would be okay. But but just be careful. I mean, look, and how do I say it? I don't care if they go ahead and drink it now, but as long as they know this stuff. Yeah. That's, you know, it's like smoking. Everyone knows that causes cancer. Yeah. If you smoke, thumbs up. All yeah. the best. Keep away from me. But... This is with cow's milk. Just just treat it the same. It is dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Interesting, Steve. Really yeah. good update, mate. Interesting, eh? Yeah, very interesting. We'll oh, again we'll put it this way. Can I tell you that it's actually made me think again about my takeaway coffees? Yes. It made me definitely think about that freaking plastic lid. You oh, know yeah. what? I'd really like to have a look into mm. actually, Steve. We are doing we one. Are. We we're are. Doing, we're we're doing track. one on things that you do daily that are killing you. <laughs> <laughs> which, is kind, Jeff. which is kind of funny because yeah. I didn't even think of this one because no. we actually went through a whole heap of things. Yeah. So look out for that one, guys. We're going to be doing one. We're going to be looking at your, your, your toiletries. We're going to yeah. be looking at your women's hygiene products. Yeah. We're going to be looking at what you put in your dishwasher. 
dishwasher, what yep. you wash your dishes with, what you brush your teeth with. Yeah. We're going to be looking at everything. Weird stuff. Everything that you can think of that you probably do daily. Yeah. Right now, where you're sitting, are you sitting under fluoro lights? Ooh. We've got LED lights. You know, what's the difference? Are we going to do 4G, 5G stuff in the um, atmosphere? <laughs> That's a different podcast. Uh, we might have black men with suits come through oh, and kill okay. us because that's very controversial. Very but um, at the end of the day, we're going to be talking about things that are in your environment mm. that may be doing you harm every day and what you can do about it. That'll be a good one. That'll be fun. So, And then I've got to say right off the bat, Steve, I want to have a look at how much xenoestrogen plastics am I getting oh, okay. from my cup of coffee – in the morning, if I if I get my drive through coffee and it's got a and if it's got one of those lids, I'd love to. I'd, we've got to find some research on how it. much and making make sure it's not hot would be one thing. But you have to have it hot, don't you? So that that would make it worse. <sighs> some like it hot, Steve. Mm. They do. All That's right, a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, just a quick update. Now, the scary dairy, 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 dairy type of podcast we just completed was absolutely fantastic. We talked about the problems with milk, and we we what we didn't talk about was that there's some raw milks that may be out on the market now that you may be able to use and may be healthier for you. I use the word may because they haven't been tested in the studies. But there's an ultra-processing of milk now which may preserve some of the benefits of having cow's milk because as Bobo Melnick said, he said that it's the raw, it's the processed milk. It's the one that doesn't have the bugs in it, that has the problems and, and can, can drive all sorts of Western diseases. So there are new processing that, that can may help you drink your milk without having the dangers associated with, with dairy, such as hormonal cancers that we talked about, like prostatic cancer in men and breast cancer in women. So that's one aspect of the podcast that we're updating. The second aspect is that there are some nut milks out that we found that are actually healthy. Now, when I say milk, I spell it M-Y-L-K. They come in a jar like a peanut butter really and they're made from cashews and they're made from almonds and there's something you can google and look out there which is like a paste you take it home put it in a blender with some water and it turns into your magic milk it doesn't have any of those nasty chemicals and antacids that we found in the other milks you know like calcium carbonate it doesn't have any of that it doesn't have any canola oil added to it because the nuts themselves have the oils that are quite healthy for you so keep an eye out of those i don't know where they are or when they are, or how they are, but you can probably get them online like everything else in the world these days. So check them out, and they could be healthy alternative milk processes for you to drink. So enjoy. All right, Steve-O. Yes. FAQs. Yes, let's go. All right, let's go. Uh, I'm hearing a lot about how exercise, meal timing, and food affecting menstruation, um, affecting menstruating women differently. Also, most research doesn't include women participates due to their cycle and hormone changes. Is that true? Okay, so we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. What impacts do things like intermittent fasting, high-intensity training have on menstruating female body? Is some of the research not applicable to women, and do we respond differently? That's a really, That's a really good, good question. question. Because, again, in scientific studies, they like to keep things as norm, yeah. um, status quo, yep. um, as possible, Steve. Yeah, and obviously, weird. with women with, with hormone fluctuations, yeah could throw a, a spanner in the works. Absolutely. Is it, it true? Absolutely it does. Because let, let's say that you're overweight, a uh, woman, then you're unlikely to menstruate because you may have things like PCOS, those sort of things. But if you're underweight, like you, you're severely anorexic or something, you're unlikely to ovulate because you're underweight. Yeah. So fasting would be different on those particular individuals. If you fast an anorexic or a very underweight woman, they'll get worse. If you fast an overweight woman with PCOS, they actually get better. Wow. So, because it's just, you know, it's very different. So, coming back to the first question, I'm hearing yeah. a lot about how exercise, meal timing, and food affecting menstruating women differently. Mm. So, the research doesn't include... So, what do we, what do we know about those things? I sure. Mean, um, meal times are very, very important. Because you've got to remember, reproduction or ovulating or menstruating occurs when the individual is healthy. So, they've got to follow a very healthy style of diet, exercise, and eating. So, is they're ovulating. If they're over-exercising... It's perceived as stressful, and so their ovulation will be reduced. Right. And, of course, it'll be reduced because the progesterone will increase cortisol because progesterone is the, the great female hormone, and that will be depleted by the ex excessive cortisol because right. progesterone turns into cortisol. Right. So you don't want to over-exercise if you want to menstruate. Mm. You know, you see the top athletes, are, a lot of them aren't menstruating because they're simply too lean. Sure. And you need cholesterol to make your hormones, so you could have two lower levels of cholesterol. So having good, healthy, fat-rich meals are very, very good for your fertility. So that's where the meals come into it. 
But the timing around it would depend on the individual and that, that would depend on what works for them. So it's a, it's a bit of a individualise that last one. So it does have an impact and oh, yeah. obviously a lot of studies do sort of yeah. skew things away from females. It does because mm. they, they pick a, as you correctly pointed out before, just, just the one type and they try and just, they don't have different, you know, age groups or, or, or weights and all that sort of thing. They do things okay. very differently. Okay. Mm. Thanks for the question. Um, here's the second one. Yeah. And this is of interest to me. So, is there any relationship between the appendix removal, especially ruptured and then um, scar due to surgery, and the future health of the gut biome? Does having your appendix removed make you more likely to have a leaky gut and uh, therefore more likely to nutrient deficiency? Now, yeah. before you get into it, Steve, I had my appendix removed when I was 20. I'm going to say 20. I'm going to say 20. Um, I was very sick. I mm. was in the hospital for three weeks, nearly mm. died. Wow. And they had to operate twice because I got an infection as yeah, well too. Semi, yeah, um, Yeah, they, they misdiagnosed me when I first went in as having a um, chest infection. <laughs> oh, jeepers. That's so a I said they're dying away. in hospital yeah. before they decided to operate and remove my appendix, but it turned into peritonitis. Ugh. So, yes, uh, very, very messy, yeah. not fun. And, yeah. I, and, and it's funny because at the time, the doctor told me, Appendix are an evolutionary byproduct that we no longer require. They're completely useless, so they have no impact on the health of your stomach or your gut. You're not going to miss this little thing. They're as useless as tonsils. Well, I know that tonsils aren't useless because they're a first line of defense. Correct. But the appendix is a weird little tail on the um, on the <laughs> on, on the on the. Uh, in, in the gut yeah. um, is it because it used to be our real tail Steve and, and we used to wag our tail and we don't <laughs> like, I'm kidding right but but what is the what actually does the appendix do yep. if it's removed what problems can we can we have yeah it's funny because this is one of those answers that I printed out a paper for and the title of the paper will give it away the immunological functions of the appendix, an example of redundancy. So it talks about the immunological effects of how it regulates the colon a bit there. It, it used to be a much more important organ, and you can live without it like you are, of course, and millions of people around the world. But it does serve a role in modulating the gut microbiome. Yeah. Now, does this mean that if you've got appendicitis, it's going to burst, you'll leave it in there? No. no. You take it out. Yeah. Like a spleen. Yeah. If it's ruptured, take it out. Yeah. And um, because you're going to die if, if it stays in there. We know what happens, what, what happens there. So it does serve a role to modulate the gut microbiome. So what are people who have had their appendix? Like my mum has had her gallbladder taken out. Yeah. She had to completely change her diet completely. Yeah. As you say, you can live without your gallbladder, yep. your spleen, yep. your appendix, yep. of which the appendix is probably the easiest live to live without. Yeah, it is. But um, what about bile production, Steve? What about that dripping? What, what about the things that you're missing by not having an appendix? And, you know, what things do you need to be mindful of? Because, again, we're understanding the gut health more and more. Mm. There is nothing in nature that is redundant completely. I just don't believe that. Mm. So, yes, while we can live without it, we're probably not living optimally without it. What can we do to overcome... Um, you know the loss of the appendix what function even if it's a small one does it does it have in the body mm. it regulates the gut microbiome right a very small one yep. but it does regulate it so if you haven't got it there you have to be having rich polyphenol diet that's so interesting. a healthy diet just to keep the microbiome sure you know if, if you're gonna it's like the gallbladder thing you take that out, you can't concentrate the bile, so the you fats. have to modify your eating so you can't just have big meals. You, you yeah. try and eat throughout the day a bit more and less yeah. fat yeah. Um, all at once. So, so you The beautiful thing is that the body is very adaptive. Very. And we, and we can, you know, sort of accomplish all sorts of things. Yep. But this is funny because I've never actually spoken to anybody about this, um, about what... I should what changes I should make or what things I should include into my diet. So you would say polyphenols to help with the regulation of the gut flora? Yep, since your natural regulating thing or one of them, your 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 good old appendix is gone. What did the what does the appendix actually do? It used to be very important for digesting cellulose and and when we were vegans, you know, this is in evolutionary terms. And then of course now we're not vegans. A vegan, a vegan animal can't live without its appendix. It dies. Right. Take a one out of a rabbit, 
Kill it. Gone. So, so, so this is the interesting thing. So, so I should go on to a keto-based diet then. That's what you're saying. A keto-based diet would be good for you, actually. Well, actually, I do thrive on a ketogenic-based diet. Ketogenic diets are very good for the gut microbiome so as well. So should stop eating my vegetables. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, all of them. They're right. useless things, though. <laughs> no, I just need to make sure that I'm, I'm taking other compounds to help with balancing out the gut flora. Correct. So polyphenols are obviously Herbs, very important. Spices, Herbs and spices. Herbs and spices. Yeah, yeah and it's cinnamon and that yep. sort of stuff. And Yeah, okay. Peachy peels, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, okay. It'll be good. And okay. let's keep your gut microbiome. What's produced healthy. in What's produced in the appendix, Steve? Um, just cytokines. Cytokines. Yeah, which are things that actually regulate the immune system. Okay. Hmm. So they're immunological organ. Okay. Like the tonsils serve as an immunological organ as well. Mm. So does the stomach acid. You know, lots of things. Do. Is there any? Uh, has there been any research with people that have had their appendix removed in terms of? Um, disease states, weight gain, mm. um, you know, anything that, that that we can look at and go, you know what, this is this seems to be a trend with people who had their appendix out. There was one I read that didn't make any difference. Once they had the appendix out there, there was no difference in their health outcomes. Okay. So now now here, here's the catch thing though, but you have to take it out if they're sick. Of course. So you know it's Well you certainly of- don't want to leave it in. But as, as I said, it's one of those things. If if there's something that you can do to help, so mm. increase the polyphenols might sure. help with the immune system a little yep. bit. Um, but yeah, we know that that we, the, the gut really is a great place for the immunity, which is something I'm only just really starting to understand now Absolutely more and more. Absolutely, it is. Um, okay, well that's a good one. Yeah. Well, thanks, Steve. No worries.